You know, estrogen is kind of like those Sour Patch Kids commercials. Like, first it's like really, really like bad, and then they're also really, really good. And you know, honestly, estrogen just gets a bad rap sometimes. But the fact is, is that we do have to understand how estrogen truly is in the body. And if we know how it works, then we can have a little bit more well, I guess respect for the good things it does in the body, but also have a lot more of a vengeance when it comes down to trying to get rid of the bad forms of estrogen. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna explain the different kinds of estrogen, but I'm gonna give you three different kinds of vegetables that you can utilize that are a surefire way to help you out with removing estrogen out of your body or at least helping estrogen become the right kind of estrogen that can improve your life rather than hold you back. You're watching the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel. And there's new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. They're gonna help you live your best life possible. So make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications whenever I'm going live or whenever I am posting a video as well. Let's get to the science. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take a look at the different kinds of estrogen in the body really quick. Okay, again, estrogen is not all bad, but it's also not all good. You see, the good kind of estrogen is known as 2-hydroxyestrogen. It's a very good estrogen. It actually helps support testosterone levels, it has powerful anti-cancer effects, and it's also known as an antioxidant in general. So believe it or not, estrogen has the ability to be good, but more than likely, you are overrun with what is called 16-hydroxy and 4-hydroxy estrogens, things like estradiol. These are the estrogens that are not good. These are the estrogens that actually wreak havoc on your body, and believe it or not, and this is all gonna make sense in a second, your body views estrogens, like 16-hydroxys and 4-hydroxy estrogens, as toxins. It literally treats them as poisons. It has to send them to the liver, and it has to process them just in the same way as if you were to drink a bottle of Windex. Okay, not literally, but the fact is, your liver has to process it just like it's a poison. So what are some veggies that you can start consuming to take control of your estrogen levels? Okay, well, I'm gonna give them to you. The first thing that you wanna start focusing on is high amounts of cruciferous vegetables. Okay, this means broccoli, this means cauliflower, this means bok choy, it means Brussels sprouts. Quite honestly, they're the good tasting vegetables that still have their anti-estrogen effects even when you cook them. You see, they contain something known as DIM, methane. It sounds like such a crazy fancy name, but it's really nothing that extravagant but its effect on estrogen is pretty darn powerful. You see, it's derived from indole-3-carbonyl, also known as IC3. You see, IC3 works in conjunction with the liver. It helps the liver metabolize the negative attributes of estrogen through the upregulation of what is called CYP1A2. Okay, this is a specific enzyme that honestly, we don't have to go into a lot of detail about, but it's an enzyme that is responsible for taking estrogen and sort of unboxing it and getting rid of the bad portions of it and leaving the good portions of it. You see, this CYP1A2 enzyme is able to take the estrogens that would normally cause testosterone to turn into more estrogen, and it's able to turn them into a kind of estrogen that can actually be advantageous for your overall healthy lifestyle. It also converts the really, really strong estrogens into weaker ones. And this sounds weird, but if you have a high potency estrogen floating around the body, like a cysteine hydroxy estrogen, it's gonna go and it's gonna laser target areas of your body and it's gonna cause you to store more fat, it's gonna cause you to retain more water, it's gonna make your face puffy, it's gonna make you moody, it's gonna cause all kinds of issues. But if you have lesser, little weaker bouts of estrogen, you're putting it in a situation where the body can actually handle it. It can handle it at that point in time and at that satellite location of the body at any given instance. And believe it or not, if you actually have the good kinds of estrogen in the body, it can actually decrease what is called sex hormone binding globulin, which means that unlocks the testosterone that you have available. So if you're a male, then you don't want to have high amounts of SHBG. SHBG takes your testosterone and it carries it around the body, but it doesn't like to let go of it. So it takes that testosterone and it's just like, okay, let's go for a ride, but you can't get out of my car. Okay, it's not fun for anybody. So basically what you have with estrogen being in the situation and being metabolized properly, if you have the good estrogens, it allows the door to open at every other stoplight or so and let some of that testosterone off the car so it's not just being totally hijacked all the time. The next vegetable that you wanna start consuming a little bit more of, believe it or not, is mushrooms. Okay, mushrooms have a multitude of different benefits, especially when it comes down to hormones in general. High in vitamin D, all that crazy nonsense that we hear about on all kinds of just general health websites. But what about the cool factor when it comes down to estrogen? You see, mushrooms have the ability to fight off aromatase. Okay, they're an anti-aromatase in a natural way. 
See, what aromatase is, is a particular enzyme. And this enzyme takes testosterone, and it takes progesterone in females, and it converts it into estrogen. It's like just an overall bad dude. It just shouldn't be in your body. It's just a small amount is one thing, but if we have a large amount of aromatase activity, it means all the extra testosterone that you work for, that you train hard for, that you eat right for, ends up instead of getting used and making you more powerful and stronger and sharper and brighter and better, it ends up taking that and converting it into estrogen, which makes you softer and makes you weaker and makes you, quite frankly, a little bit more lame if you have too much of it. So by decreasing the number of what are called MCF7 cells, mushrooms are able to make it so you have less receptor sites for estrogen to act upon. So estrogen floats through the body, but it can't really do anything unless it hits a receptor site. So if we decrease the number of receptor sites, we decrease the number of overall bad estrogens that can cause chaos in your body. So mushrooms have been shown to reduce these MCF7 cells, these estrogen receptors. In fact, there was some research that was done at the City of Hope's Oncology Center that took a look at breast cancer patients, because of course, breast cancer patients, there's gonna be a direct correlation with estrogen and the proliferation of cancer cells. They found that just by adding in some simple white button mushrooms, those are just like the little mushrooms that you see at the grocery store, very, very common. By adding those into the diet, there was a big reduction in aromatase activity via the downregulation of those MCF7 cells. So meaning patients that had breast cancer had less instances of estrogen related side effects and issues simply by adding mushrooms in because they weren't having this overall aromatase activity taking the testosterone or taking the progesterone and turning it into estrogen. So all you gotta do is take some mushrooms, add them up into your Brussels sprouts that you're sauteing and you've got a nice powerful anti-estrogenic little dish there. The next one is spirulina. Okay, now hear me out on this because the thing is, there's not a whole lot of vegetables out there that have anti-estrogenic effects. It's hard to fight off estrogen. And technically spirulina is more of an algae, but I'm gonna consider it a veggie for all intents and purposes. Now the reason that spirulina has such a powerful effect when it comes down to fighting estrogen is because it's extremely high bioavailability of vitamin E. You see, vitamin E is a powerful antioxidant in the first place, but even if you take it in supplement form, your body is usually not getting it in a true bioavailable way. You're getting it in some kind of artificial, almost synthetic form, which isn't gonna metabolize the same way. Whereas if you're looking at spirulina like in a true algae form, not necessarily a powder, but a true algae form in its raw form, then you have 24 to 30 times the amount of vitamin E than you're gonna find in any other vegetable or fruit. There is a ton of it. Now, why does vitamin E matter with estrogen, okay? Thomas, you're going on a tangent here. Well, vitamin E is literally like the opposite of estrogen, okay? What I mean by that is things like prostaglandins, things that trigger inflammation, okay? Estrogen skyrockets those. Vitamin E reduces them, okay? Then additionally, things like cyclooxygenase enzymes and LOX enzymes, enzymes that trigger inflammation at a localized place. Okay, well guess what? Estrogen increases those. Yes, estrogen increases inflammation in your joints and makes you ache. Well guess what? Vitamin E does the opposite. And those are just two instances. Literally, there's dozens. If somehow, they are just the opposite. Estrogens are very powerful when it comes to causing free radical damage. Vitamin E is a very powerful antioxidant. So when you take something like a true raw algae form of spirulina, you're getting a very potent vitamin E that has the ability to help the liver detox, but also has the ability to truly fight estrogen throughout the entirety of the body by literally just creating a system and a process through different enzymatic pathways that make the body less likely to use estrogen. Now, when it comes down to spirulina, you guys know that I'm a huge fan of SP2. I know these guys personally, I know Adam, I'm a good friend of Adam's, I met him up in Carmel, like what, maybe a year or so ago when I was up north. And the fact is, these guys have pioneered a way to create a usable form of spirulina in a raw algae form that doesn't taste terrible. Because spirulina tastes like swamp water, like it's bad. And if you ever have the powder, it's pretty gnarly. But when it comes down to getting in a raw algae form, you can add it to yogurt, you can add it to your almond butter, whatever, and be able to get the power of the vitamin E in its true fat soluble form in its algae form that's not gonna be adulterated and not gonna be totally ruined by the time it gets inside your body. So when it comes down to getting your hands on some of this SB2 raw algae spirulina, you guys know that you can find it in my description down below, get a special discount on it because all of the Thomas DeLauer fans and Thomas DeLauer viewers always get the best kind of deals when it comes down to the things that I use. So make sure you check them out at the end of this video and give it a shot. But it actually doesn't stop there when it comes down to how spirulina and how these algaes actually help out estrogen. You see, again, we have to look at the liver. Okay, the liver processes estrogen, like I said in the very beginning of the video. Okay, the liver has to detox estrogen. 
Okay, it has to take it, it has to unbox it, and it has to excrete it along with the bile and get it out of your body. It shouldn't be there. Well, guess what? Spirulina and these algaes contain these sulfur-containing aminos. And sulfur, although it sounds like it's a poison, something that's coming out of a volcano or something that's quite not so pleasant, believe it or not, sulfur is what allows our liver to detox because it contributes to the production of what is called glutathione. Without glutathione, we can't detox. It's our body's own inherent, natural, built-in master antioxidant. So these sulfur-containing aminos that are bioavailable in spirulina are now able to help out the liver and help the liver process those 16 and 4 hydroxyestrogens and get them out of your body, leaving you with the two hydroxyestrogens, the good estrogens. So there you have it, the three different kinds of veggies that you can utilize. Heck, you can mix these all into one dish with your algae, with your cruciferous veggies, and with your mushrooms and even your onions that kind of fall into that same category. If you have ideas for future videos, you know where to put them. But also, make sure you check out that spirulina and say a big thank you to SB2 for also sponsoring this video down in the description below. As always, I'll see you in the next video.